This video is kindly being sponsored by Analyst Prep, who are the number one rated preparation platform for the CFA and FRM programs. They're offering 20% off their products for those of you who use the code AFSAL20 at checkout. You can find the relevant link in the video description below. What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Afzal Hussain, and today we're gonna to be talking about how the CFA is changing going forward and how the CFA Institute is dealing with the implications of COVID for both the exams and the candidates that are sitting them. Everything I'm gonna be covering in this video has been timestamped in the video description. So if you want, feel free to skip around to the bits that interest you the most. For those of you who wanna find out a bit more about the CFA, you can check some of these videos that I've created previously. But without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Firstly, why are things changing? The reason why things are changing are threefold. Firstly, you've got COVID. Secondly, you've got flexibility reasons. And thirdly, an increase in locations. If we start with COVID, obviously social distancing measures mean or make it very hard to take exams next to each other. So typically the CFA is sat by thousands of people sat right next to each other. In London, it's done in the Excel center where you've got thousands of people sat in a traditional type of exam hall. And that really, you can't really do that when there's COVID happening, right? And so that's one of the reasons. Secondly, uh, typically there are CFA exams every year in about 80 to 90 locations. And by doing these updates, which I'm gonna talk about later on in this video, it allows the number of locations to sit exams increase. So it means more people can take exams all over the world. Um, and then thirdly, flexibility. Doing computer-based exams compared to paper-based exams allows for more flexibility, allows for a lot more people to sign up and take exams, and then that has a knock-on effect in the number of people that pay to sit the exams, the number of people that get the qualification, how that impacts the brand of the CFA Institute, popularity, all of that, it kind of grows with an increase in flexibility, an increase in the number of locations that candidates can sit the exams, and obviously taking into consideration the COVID implications and so being socially distanced while taking those exams. So as you might be aware, the CFA has three levels, level one, two, and three. This December is the last time there'll be a paper-based level one exam. And so the next exam for level one is gonna be in February and that's gonna be an electronic computer-based, still multiple choice exam. This means that instead of going into a traditional hall with tables and lots of people doing a paper-based exam, you're gonna go into a small room with probably 20 to 30 computers boxed, so you won't be able to look right or left. You'll be in your own little cubicle and you're gonna be taking those exams in those environments. Okay, so the main differences between the paper-based exams and the new computer-based exams are as follows. Paper-based questions were all multiple choice. There were 240 questions that you needed to do in six hours. Three hours in the morning, 120 questions. Three hours in the afternoon, 120 questions. The computer-based exam is gonna differ in that it's not six hours, it's gonna be four and a half hours. Two hours, 15 minutes in the morning and two hours, 15 minutes in the afternoon. And it's not gonna be 240 questions, it's gonna be 180 questions. So 60 questions less and you're gonna do 90 questions in the morning and then 90 questions in the afternoon. There are lots of resources to use to prepare for your CFA studies. However, a lot of them can be quite expensive and that brings me on to today's sponsor, Analyst Prep. Analyst Prep are the number one rated preparation platform for the CFA and a few other finance related qualifications. They're offering 20% off their products for those of you who use the code AFSAL20 at checkout. You can find the relevant links in the video description below. They're a low cost alternative with high quality content and material. They've got impressive study notes and videos. They've got tons of practice questions and a huge question bank. And they've got mock exams as well as customizable quizzes. Their platform is super easy to use and has a very user friendly interface and user experience. They also offer preparation material for the FRM, financial risk management, and other actuarial exams. You can find out all about that by checking their website, which I'll link below. Be sure to check them out by clicking the link in the video description below, and don't forget to use the code AFSAL20 for 20% off your purchases at checkout. So a lot of you might be wondering, if you do level one in 2021 in February, when can you take level two? Because a lot of you might pass and you wanna get it over and done with. So the same rules apply as previously. You can take the exam six months after you pass level one. So you can go and do level two 
CFA in August 2021 if you pass in February 2021. The same applies for retakes. If you fail February 2021 CFA level one, you can retake it after six months, which will be August 2021. Obviously, with paper-based exams, it takes a lot longer to get your results. Typically, they would get your results back to you within 60 days. However, given it's going to be computer-based, you can expect your results back a lot sooner, which is good because it means you're not waiting around anxiously for two months. And last but not least, you're all probably wondering, are CFA level two and three also going to be changed from paper-based to computer-based exams? And the answer is yes. They're all going to change going forward. However, important to note, only CFA level one will be available to sit four times a year and CFA level two and three will only be available twice a year. So that's the only difference between them. In terms of how many questions within level two and three, if that structure is changing and the time limit for each, keep an eye out on the CFA website for future updates because they'll update those in due course. I've linked sources and useful further reading in the video description below. So if you wanna do some further reading or research, make sure you check those links out. They recommend around 300 hours of study per exam. So make sure you do your research before taking on such a big commitment. Good luck to anyone who is sitting their exam in December 2020. I'm sure you're gonna smash it. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. You got this. Peace.